Alignment and centration of a toric multifocal lens. We're marking the steep axis here about 100 degrees using a cystotome to make marks in the anterior cornea. These marks will be easily visible throughout the surgery and will allow us to align up the toric lens at that axis. Now that that's been made, we'll make our paracentesis. We're going to show you this video unedited. There's a lot to be learned from that, so there's the paracentesis into the anterior chamber. We'll instill some preservative-free lidocaine for some anesthesia. Squirt some on the cornea as well. And then now using a dispersive viscoelastic, we'll fill the anterior chamber and coat and protect the corneal endothelium. Now the steep axis was 100, so we'll make the main incision about 90 degrees away. And why is that? That will slightly increase the astigmatism, which is okay, we can just adjust the torque lens power, but it won't change the axis. And that's important. We'll poke in here with this, the forceps and we're gonna create our round capsular rexus. Important to center the capsular rexus over the visual axis. And so that means making it a little bit wider here nasally as we're doing now than you'd anticipate. You'll see why at the end of the case. That's just about perfect. You see the light reflex is exactly in the center of our capsular axis. Bounce salt solution for some hydrodissection. And here we're loosening the cataract from its attachment to the capsule. Do that again in the other direction. And now the nucleus slightly prolapses out of the capsule back, which is great. It's going to make it very easiest for, for us to access. We'll recoat the corneal endothelium with viscoelastic, just for safety. And now we'll take our phaco probe. Again, high flow, high vacuum settings, very low ultrasound energy. Put the probe inside the eye. Here's the chopper. Buzz into the middle of the nucleus, and we'll chop it in half. Each half of the nucleus now can be removed. We can further chop into quarters, or in this case, just simply feed the pieces forward. The job of the chopper at this point is to keep the pieces in front of the phaco probe and keep things flowing in to the port. So now we'll go after the other piece, and this comes down pretty quickly. These are very efficient settings on our machine, and this is not too bad of a cataract. Choppers there in a safety position just to prevent the poster caps from coming up. And then we're done. On to the irrigation aspiration probe for the removal of the lens cortex. So the technician switches that over. And we'll put the probe in here. We're going to remove these little fragments and then do a circumferential manner for the removal of the cortex. You did notice that the incisions we made into the eye, the paracetesis and the main incision, were made so that they barely nick the limbal vessels, that's ideal. That tiny bit of blood will of course help these incisions seal permanently. Far better than a completely avascular incision. Capsular bag looks great. We'll fill up the eye now with our cohesive viscoelastic. That looks very good. There's the round capsular axis and you can see it's centered beautifully on the microscope lights. We're going to use the microscope lights, these Purkinje reflexes, these images, to line up the lens. Delivery of the eye wall goes in the capsule bag. Make sure we go under the nasal rexus. And there we go. Using the chopper, we'll align the lens. Make sure the entire lens is in the capsule bag. And we'll rotate it. We're going to rotate it just shy of its final position. So that looks great. Its arms are opening up beautifully. Irrigation aspiration probe is going in the eye to go under the optic. And this is a very important step. You have to remove the viscoelastic from the capsule bag and from behind the optic. Otherwise, it'll prevent the optic from being tacky and sticking to the capsule bag where you want it to be. The lens will be slippery and it'll move. Now remove the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. We'll use our chopper now to help rotate the lens, line it up. The eye probe is in the eye because it's giving us the infusion. So the eye stays inflated. 
and slowly by slowly we rotate it and you see the three toric marks on the eye well those need to be lined up with the marks we made on the cornea and that looks really good there just nudge it a tiny bit more now to avoid parallax we need to line up those Purkinje images you see the first Purkinje image which is the one on the cornea and then there's a fourth Purkinje image the inverted one coming from the eye well we line up the Purkinje images, and that tells us that that's the center. And so the lens now is in the correct axis, and the Purkinje images show us that the lens is beautifully aligned.